Hello, my name is Rick Meter. I'm the City Landscape Architect for the City of Novi, and today we just want to show you some wildflowers you might find walking around in the woods or in fields out around Novi. So without further ado, let's get started. Um, the first thing we want to do is mention that there are different types of habitats that you're going to be walking in. There's woods, you know, there's, but there's different kinds of woods. There's dry woods, which are more like oak hickory woods. They're um, a little bit hillier, drier, more um, open openness to it. And then there's beech maple woods, which are richer, moister soils, a lot of times a little bit lower. Um, and they get really dark shade in the summer. And wooded wetlands are low, usually flat, with some small minor mounds near it. Can be sporadically wet, means they can get dry sometimes or they're permanently wet. And then floodplain woods are basically what has a stream going along it or a river, and it's a flat area alongside of it, which floods occasionally and other times it's dry. And then of course, old fields is just where it's an old farmer's field that's kind of converting to woods or something else. Um, just for a scientific thing, a habitat is made up of a habitat, when you talk about a habitat, it's not just, it's a physical factor such as the, the hills and the, and the moisture and the sunlight and that kind of thing, the soils, but also it's what other things are there. For example, predators like deer are a big part of their plants. They can impact what will grow in an area as well. So, but these are the typical habitats that are you're found in and around Novi. And we're gonna go into some of the wildflowers that you you'll typically find there in the spring. So first we're gonna start in oak hickory woods. Like I mentioned before, those are a little bit higher in elevation usually. Um, they have slopes, uh, usually the soils are a little bit drier. And some of the plants that you, you see here are the bingberries, which they look very similar. The flowers are similar, but the berries in the fall, the, the white ones are called doll's eyes because they're white and they look like a little eye of a doll, and red bingberry. Uh, these are really, they're about, they can get one, two to three feet tall, the plants, uh, and they're really pretty, but don't eat them. They're, they are toxic. Okay, next one you'll see starting now, those will, the, the baneberries will be blooming in another month or so. Uh, right now, Jack in the Pulpit and Cutleaf Toothwort are blooming. Um, Jack in the Pulpit, it's, this is the flower. The actual flower is this little guy in here, and it's a the the leaf kind of forms a cover over it, so this is like an old time preacher in an old uh, pulpit. That's what I call it, Jack of the Pulpit. It has three leaves, and then in the fall, these, it has bright red berries. And you might late fall, you might just see a cluster of berries in in the woods. Cut leaf toothworts, in other words, blooming now. You can see it has really separate leaves and it has a little white flower. And this blooming, they're blooming now. These you can might see. Well, these would be more individual in the area. These you'll see lots and lots of them together, oftentimes. Another thing in oak in oak woods, you have because it's lighter throughout the year. They have a lot of sedges that can grow in them. Uh, Pennsylvania sedge is is very common, and it has little clumps, um, and and then. This is the early stage of the flower, and then later, which is, you'd probably see now, is that they branch out little yellow flowers. So that's what a Pennsylvania sedge look. And then another sedge looks, the plant looks a lot like Pennsylvania sedge, but it blooms at a different time. It's called rosy sedge. And you can see it has little flowers along the stem versus at the end. So the, the plant itself of both of them looks very similar, maybe six, six inches tall, but flowers are very different. And this blooms later too. So this is blooming now. This might bloom in another month or two. Um, right now, another couple that are blooming, spring beauties are blooming now. You can see it's a little, it's a little white flower. This plant has kind of grassy looking leaves and it might get three to five inches tall. And if you're lucky and in, in you're in an oak woods with a lot of leaves, you'll see thousands of these things all blooming right now and it's a really pretty little flower but it helps to get down low to look at it to see these stripes and then another one that's getting ready to bloom now it's a bigger plant this can get about one foot tall or so and then it has a lot of these lavender flowers this is wild geranium 
and in the fall, it, this will kind of turn reddish, the leaves turn reddish. Well, this, this one goes away. Uh, it's called a spring ephemeral, which we'll talk more about with, a, with the uh, beech maple forest. But this one will keep its leaves throughout the year while, while geranium. It's, it's a really nice plant. Um, another one that's, this is one of the earlier bloomers of the year. This is hepatica. And these leaves, actually, first what it does is it blooms and then it forms leaves. So this is a really nice plant. You'll find it in oak forest for sure, near oak trees. Oftentimes at the base of an oak tree, you'll find them. And um, then another one, it's just coming out now. You'll see crowds of these like this, like a big patch of them, because they spread by runners. And if you, if you dug these up, you have an, a bunch of underground uh, roots going everywhere. And this is a white flower that forms underneath the white the leaf, and then that becomes an apple. This is another one you don't want to eat. The apple is toxic, so you don't want to eat it. But it looks nice, and wildlife does eat it. And then finally, the Solomon seal. This plant can get like two to three feet tall, right? And it, it's just emerging now. The flowers are not emerging. The plants are emerging now. They're the later, so they'll bloom in probably in June. And they have these double flowers, white flowers hanging underneath. And then in the fall, they become these blueberries. Now, beech maple woods, as I mentioned before, this, these are typically moister. And in the summer, they form really dark shade. So plants that are here, they're usually spring ephemeral on the ground. A lot of wildlife wildflowers are spring ephemerals, which means they come out early when there's still light in the woods do their thing, they bloom, they form their berries. And then when the shade all comes in, then they, they, they don't have the energy available to do all that. So they, they either, either really shade adapted or they um, go away. A lot of times plants will just go away completely and come back the next year. So this is a really pretty plant, the wild columbine. Um, it can get three, three feet tall, even have a lot of these yellow, red and yellow flowers which hummingbirds like. And then a ground cover you'll see often is wild ginger. This can form a, a good covering, a dense covering of, of ground cover. And um, it likes shade and kind of moist. And then underneath the leaves, if you want to look, you can see the flower. It's a little triangular flower and it's a really cute little flower, brown, but uh, you gotta go looking for it. Here's another really nice plant uh, called giant blue cohosh and this gets about two feet tall and it can also form clusters and here's the flower which forms little seeds uh, berries um, and then Dutchman's breeches is a low one this is about there maybe maybe six inches tall and it gets its name from its flower from its flower which someone thought it looked like some pants of a Dutchman um, hanging on the line of, of uh, clotheslines hanging out to dry so the flower gets its name from that, Dutch from the breeches. Here's another one that's blooming. It's almost done blooming now, but depends on where you are. It's trout lily. The, the leaf is really distinctive. It's this mottled green and brown look, it's kind of leathery leaf. And then the flower is yellow. There's a white flowered trout lily too, but this seems to be more common around here. And this is another one where the leaves will eventually just go away and you won't even know the plants there until next spring. And Virginia water leaf. This one keeps its leaves. It gets its name because it looks like the, some water is, is gotten on the leaves and, and washed the color away. But it's got a really pretty white flower. This one can get a foot or two tall, well, a foot tall maybe. Uh, it's a really pretty plant. And then false Solomon seal. This can I'm, I, one other thing I want to back up and say about habitats is they're usually completely exclusive. So you might have an oak woods merging into a beech maple woods merging into a wetland so you'll have some plants crossing over between habitats so you might find some of these plants in an oak woods and vice versa you might find some uh, spring beauties or wild geraniums closer to you know, more of a beech maple woods it's 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 a gradual thing these are just kind of help you like, get an idea for where you might find things and 
This is false Solomon seal, which is a plant gets about a foot and a half or two feet tall and has flowers at the end, which become berries in the spring, in the fall, excuse me. And these can be a, a lot of these together. And if they do it all together, it's kind of a nice look with these cascading stalks with flowers. And uh, um, then another plant that's, that's doing it right now is um, bloodroot. And it's, it's an, another one of the early bloomers. It has a single flower coming out the top and a little white flower. And um, this is what it looks like when it's coming out. The leaves are curled, curled up and then they open up to form these kind of uh, interesting looking leaves. One of the fun things about bloodroot is its seed has a little uh, white attachment, which has uh, fat and sugar, I think, for um, what it's what the nice thing. The, what happens is that attracts ants and they'll take the seed with them, they'll crawl along to their home and they will eat the white part and leave the seed. So you might find seeds or bloodroots growing where you never planted them or never knew they existed. It's because ants have brought the seed with them and they've eaten the white part and left the seed to grow. So that's kind of a fun plant and it's one of the early bloomers. Another one that's also st just starting to bloom now is early meadow rue and this grows to about a foot and a half to two feet tall, more like a foot and a half and it has a male and a female plant. And so one of the flowers, I don't know which it is, is is this kind of yellow it looks like an old um fringed lamp co lamp cover and it's a it's a really nice dainty little plant but it it can get a foot and a half two feet across and then another ground cover is foam flower this is a really pretty white flower and it can form a, a, a real dense ground cover again and this turns kind of reddish in the fall the leaves do so it blooms probably another month or so, but then the leaves stick around and they turn red in the fall. The, the early meadow root also, the leaves also stick around. Great trillium, a lot of people love trillium. So do deer, they eat them a lot. So they're hard to find. If you find a, cl a cluster of them, you're really lucky and leave them because they'll grow and they'll spread and, and hopefully um, keep it keep going because deer do like to eat them. One thing about the, the, the trillium flower starts white, bright white, but then as it get old, gets older, it turns pink. So if you see a trillium and it's pink, it's not a different plant. It's just, it's just an old flower aging with time, just like a leaf does in the fall, changes color, this, the flower changes color. And then one more plant is the, uh, Golden Alexander, this is a kind of a pretty gets, this gets pretty good size, like two or three feet tall, has these bright yellow flowers. This blooms in June, probably. Um, and it can be a real spreader, but it's a really quite, quite a distinctive plant when you find it. Now, if we move into swamps and, and, and streams, uh, wet swamps, these are some plants you'll find. These, these plants definitely like wet areas. And this one is a swamp marigold, you'll see this, Right, yellow flowers, a lot of them in one plant. And here, there's a good close up look. But these definitely want wet. So if you're in a wet area, you're gonna, that's where, that's where you'll find these. You won't find these up in woodlands and that kind of thing. Another nice little plant is a spring cress. Um, take a look at this leaf. I'm gonna talk about it later. See how it's kind of rounded and it's got these white flowers with four petals. Take a look at that because we're going to talk about it later. It's kind of a bell-shaped flower, but this is a nice little plant you'll find in wet. Springle said, just this is a sedge. It grows um, one and a half to two feet tall and spreads out with these long seed heads. So it's kind of a really neat, graceful sedge that you'll see out in the woods sometimes. And then golden ragwort is a it's a bloomer. This is getting ready to bloom. Um, it has these bright orangish, yellowish, uh, bright gold yellow flowers. The leaves at the base are different than the leaves on the stalk. And this one is another one that blooms really great now and then fades away, but the leaves stick around through the year. Golden ragwort. And then skunk cabbage is the earliest bloomer. 
This is an amazing plant too because this is the flower. The flower is actually this, and this is the cover for the flower, and it can create its own heat. So when it can start in start emerging in February or March, and if it gets too cold, it can it can create its own heat so it can, can continue to grow. Now, what you'll see now, because this bloomed a long time ago, you'll see these big old leaves. And if you break off a leaf and smell it, it doesn't smell good. It smells, well, it doesn't smell exactly like a skunk, but it doesn't smell good. And so they call it skunk cabbage. And you will see these sometimes in, in wet areas. You'll see lots and lots of these spreading across the area. They, they're not going to be in the standing water, but they'll be in wet dirt all around it. And a bush that you likely find in a, in a good wetland is spice bush. And this is a bit maybe five to eight feet tall and wide. And it forms these red berries. And it blooms. It's already done blooming. It bloomed in early, early April, late March, early April. And then in the fall, it turns bright, bright yellow. And the nice thing, one of the special things about this one is is that it's the host of the spice bush swallowtail, which also eats on eats sassafras trees. And it's a really spice bush butter, swallowtail butterfly is a really pretty uh, black and blue uh, butterfly. Take a look at it. Sw spice bush swallowtail butterfly. Now, if you go in an old field, you know what an old field is, just a farmer's field or, or an undeveloped field that is still very open. This is something you'll commonly found, pussy toes. There's a lot of different species of it, but it gets its name from the flower, which you look close, they're, they're little soft little things that look like the toes of a cat. And then in drier areas, usually um, sand coreopsis is another great flower. It has lots of yellow flowers on these long skinny um, stalks and birds, bees like the, the flowers for the pollen and birds love the flowers for the seeds that they produce so it's a really nice plant and it's easy to grow if you grow you can get some gather some seeds if you find some and plant them in your own yard you'll be happy you did and another few plants now these are blooming now this is the wild strawberry and this is about six inches tall but it is blooming now and it forms these tiny little berries which are very edible and very delicious and an interesting fact is the strawberries that we eat, it's actually a hybrid between this plant and a South, Af South American strawberry that, that so these are always small, but obviously they're much bigger now, but that they started as a hybrid from, from this one. But feel free to eat it, they're, they're delicious and you're not, gonna, you're not gonna endanger the species by eating some because there's so many out there. These can even grow in open woods like uh, oak woods. And then another nice plant is blooms early and is in typically in pretty dry areas is the hairy beard tongue, pit pensamen. And this is another really good one for hummingbirds and bees. Um, it's a good pollinator plant. Now, the other thing when you're walking through the woods, you very likely might run into some invasive species, which can do some real damage to the woods. So if you can learn these species really well, it's helpful to pull them and throw them in the garbage, not your compost pile because the seeds will cause you problems later, but throw them in the garbage. This is garlic mustard. And the distinctive thing about this, if you want to test to make sure what, if it's garlic mustard before you pull it, it has these triangular shaped leaves with kind of rough edges. And then if you pull it, it and squeeze the, the, the uh, leaf, it does smell garlicky. And you actually can eat these and they're edible. And some people have put them in their, in their salads. But if you pull them, the, that would be good for the environment because they form these seed pods. And each, each, each plant has thousands of seeds which can get transported in shoes and by animals and everything else. And then they can just take over an area and shade out all the native wildflowers that I just showed you. So if you can kill them, make sure what you got first and then feel free to pull them because they're not good things. Another one that's coming around more, more and more now is it's called native narrowleaf bittercress. It's, 
it looks ferny, but it's not a fern. And it also forms these seed heads with lots and lots of seeds in these. And um, this can get like a foot tall, foot and a half tall, but it's, and it's starting to spread out and, and bloom now. So these are two really bad invasives that are in the woods now. And if you can be sure what it is you're pulling, pull it and, and can kill it. Um, here's another one that's not as common that I've seen around here, but um, it is a, another problem called celandine. It's got little yellow flowers and again, these long seed pods. And then finally, dame's racket. Now this is a plant that a lot of people say, oh, it's so pretty, you know, we should leave it. But it's, and it looks like a phlox, but the phlox, woodland phlox has five petals, whereas this only has four. This can be white or pink or lavender, and it has long, um, long leaves. So, so you know, it's it, it is pretty. I'll admit that, but it also spreads and take can take over a woodland. So, pull it if you can. You can if you have it in your yard and you want to let it bloom and then pull it. That's fine, but pull it before it goes to seed. Okay, so. You're seeing these plants and, and you want to know where to look. Here's some ideas of places you can look around the city that are open to the public that um, you might be able to find some of these plants. So Oak Hickory Woods, um, the Wildlife Woods Park and the very east end, east of the ball fields, there's a really nice patch of Oak Hickory Woods in there with some of these wildflowers I've seen. And I believe the Chase Farms Woods also has a trail that, and where you might find some of these plants. Uh, the Beach Maple Woods, uh, example, the Novi Woods Elementary School has a beautiful Beach Maple Woods behind it. Just make sure you go when school is not in session, but it's a really nice woods, has the uh, a lot of the flowers that I just showed you, including the um, blue cohosh. Um, so, and it has a nice trail, stay on the trail, but it's it's a good, good place to walk. And then also the LMA Power Park south of the ball fields is a really nice trail in there. Um, it does get muddy, so wear shoes, you don't mind getting muddy, but it's got some really nice wildflowers in there. For wooded wetlands, um, an example is the Lakeshore Park, right off the, the bike trail. Just as you get started off to the right, you'll see thousands and thousands of the skunk cabbage I mentioned. And then also there's a woods in, in a nature area that we just, the city bought uh, at the southwest corner of Garfield and Nine Mile Road. The, the uh, ITC trail goes around it. And in there, there's a really nice wooded wetland that you could go take a look at and find, try to find some of these plants. Again, with all these plants, don't pull them. The only ones you could pull are the invasives. All the other plants, leave them, leave the flowers. The, the pollinators and everything else needs the flowers to survive. So just give it a little heads up on that. And then floodplain wood stream bank, um, Rotary Park, we've been doing a lot of removing buckthorn to restore sunnier habitat to it. So you find some there and also along the stream in Brook Farm Park. You'll find some of the, some of the, it's a good floodplain that you might find some of these plants. It's an old field, the center of the Village Woods Lake Park. They have a section of old field in there. Some of these plants might be in there. And then areas with multiple habits, just habitats, just because they're so big, are the Wildlife Woods Park, Mayberry State Park, and the Kensington Metro Park. Remember, a lot of these plants, they can they can go between one habitat and another. It's a it's a kind of a gradual transition. So um, you might find some beechwood maple plants in the oak woods, and you might find oak woods plants in the in the maple beech maple forest. But in any case, it's all nature. So if you would like me to send you a PDF of these, so you have some pictures to go with the names. You can email me at rmeter at cityofnovi.org and I will send you a PDF of the presentation so that you can have a record of these plants for yourself. Um, I hope you enjoy it. I hope this is, you, you can get out and, uh, and enjoy the, uh, the uh, plants and, and just enjoy the nature. And thank you very much for watching. Have a good day.